giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC has a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello, and welcome to FTC Recap, Road to the Houston Championship. This group of recaps is all about covering events in regions that will feature the Houston Championship as displayed by the first championship map. Reporting for FTC Recap, I'm a boss. If you have any questions that you would like to be read during the show, please tag at First Updates Now and type your question into chat. Also, we have a straw poll on Screw to see what you guys think of Skystone so far. I'm Miss Ingrid. I'm Egan. And I'm Brian. If you're watching live at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now, we have another giveaway this evening that will take that will take place between this show and the FTC Top 25. So let's bring on our producer Tyler to talk about our first giveaway and how to win. Yeah, um, so yeah, so this giveaway here we're going to be doing is for the low side cascading kit. Uh, it says it's two stage, 376 millimeter travel, whatever that means. Uh, but from Go Build Out, once again, an awesome thing in here. Uh, so if you're interested in winning that, just like if you're watching our last show, so live viewers, once again, don't forget to watch live at twitch.tv forward slash first updates. Now, <laughs> your opportunity to win will be between our next show. All you have to do is click that little follow button to, that will get you entered, and then type in the keyword that will be specified later on during the show. And that's how you'll know what to type in. Guess what? If you choose to subscribe, help fun say live live and independent you're going to get five times luck to win um get you know you help us and we you know somewhat rig it for you but not fully that's kind of the way to, to look at this mm -hmm. you can put rigged emotes in chat you know uh but once again the low side cascading kit will be up for grabs uh in between this show and our uh ftc top 25 if you're watching live so good luck everybody and enjoy our road to the houston championships all right, thank you, Tyler, for that uh, great information about Go Build as low side cascading kit. Now, we'll be starting off the night with a new addition to our recap, and this will be discussing international teams. So the highest score of any international team right now that's attending the Houston World Championship is 74 points by 5009 Helios and 15254 Facey Robotics, both from Alberta, Canada. Also, the eighth highest ranked international team in the world is CP Bots from Mexico with an OPR of 42.7. So hopefully we'll see some higher scores from these guys and impressive showings at the World Championship. All right, on to our first state of the night, Florida. Florida has competed all of its league meets and is now gearing up for the state championship at the end of February. It looks like there will be a ton of top teams attending with the likes of 3101 Boombots, 6433 Neutrinos, 7477 Super 7, and 7592 Roarbots all attending. Right now, two of the teams, Boombots and Neutrinos, are averaging about 93 points per match with some of the highest OPRs in the world. Hopefully at the state championship, we'll see some world records. And currently, the highest scores are between 111 and 125, with half and half set by Boombots and the other half by Neutrinos. So tonight, we have on screen uh, a match with Super 7 and Pink Team in their highest playoff match of the day. This was semifinal two, match one, at the, at the Space Coast League Championship. And in this match, both teams scored 99 points. And we can see right off the bat that Super 7 had a really consistent two-stone auto, uh, two-sky stone auto that they, they used their stone claw for in order to score a ton of points. Um, 63-23 Pink Team has been a team that's been around for a long time now, and we've seen in the past that they've always built these really beautiful uh, robots with a ton of 3D printed parts and, you know, bright pink. And they've kept that consistent this year with a lot of 3D printed parts, uh, all, especially on their scoring mechanism, which we can see right here in action. And another thing I noticed in this match was how little robot-robot interaction there was. Uh, something I think teams need to be wary of because this isn't something that's going to happen like a lot. But just in this match, uh, it did happen to occur. But I think a lot of top teams will be playing more aggressively at state championships, and teams should be careful of like making sure they stay within penalty bounds and like blocking restrictions and things like that. Yeah, we've we've definitely been seeing that in uh, Arkansas recently with a lot of them um, at the most recent qualifiers, a lot more contact coming between teams when they're crossing between depots and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. 
All right, on to the next state, North Carolina. So North Carolina has seen some exciting stuff this past weekend with two of the top teams in the state and world competing at the Kennedy Middle School Qualifying Tournament. So the winning alliance at this qualifier featured none other than 5064 Aperture Science as the captain and 7105 Swift Intergalactic Space Llamas as their first pick. Here's a video of their highest match, 118 points in semifinal one, match one. So, uh, one of the first things I saw right here was Aperture's method of grabbing the second Skystone. Tyler, could you go back about, like, 10 seconds? And um, th what's really special about this is a lot of teams have struggled with getting the Skystone closest to the wall because their claws will be on the edge of the robot, right? So, on uh, at one point of the, on one side, right, on red, they'll be able to get the Skystone closest to the wall. But on blue, they won't be able to use the same mechanism to get the Skystone closest to the wall. And so, what, uh, 5064 Aperture Science seems to have done here is they put it in the middle and rotate slightly just to displace the second stone and so they can actually grab onto the first stone because their claw has a pretty good margin of error what do you guys think about this yeah i think that's a really creative way of doing it and mm -hmm. especially making it so it's then easier for them to use that separate mechanism so they can still place the second sky stone on the foundation like they do the first one yeah, well, even yeah. still having a backup mechanism just in case one goes down is a really smart idea. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing I really enjoyed in this match was how both 5064 and 7105 tried to double cap. It didn't quite work here because Swift's um, capstone flew off the back, but I'm sure like in the future, this will score a lot of points and set world records because just placing a capstone on the foundation is five points. But if you're going to get another point for each level when you're going 10, 11 high, I mean, that's 16 points just for the capstone right there. And I think like that'll definitely be integral in setting records. Thoughts? Something I just want to point out real quick on here is an interesting strategy that you saw at the beginning of this match when you see uh, 5064 uh, after they come kind of actually, let's go into uh, Teleop here. You'll notice that one of the first stones that they go for is actually on the opponent's side, but they kind of get themselves in a little bit of a traffic jam here. So watch this as this happens uh, in a second here once they pick up their controllers. And you'll see that 71, uh, their, their alliance partners here, actually have to move a stone out of the way so they don't get a penalty there. See how they kind of wait right there? That's mm -hmm. a kind of an interesting thing. Like, they, they're able to steal a stone, but how many seconds do they just wait or waste uh, by doing something like that? Uh, thoughts in regards to how that strategy might play out later on? Yeah, so I think like at higher levels, you're going to have teams just with blazingly fast intakes and just really, really good drivers. And so this won't be too much of a problem later on, because especially with teams getting like four to five stone autos, some, maybe even six, there'll be like almost nothing left in the quarry for to block, right? And so I think like this is something that we're seeing now and may carry on for like a month or two. But by the world champions, it shouldn't be a problem at like the top, top gameplay. And what you're talking about, about a double capping, I think mm -hmm. double capping can definitely be a, a high risk thing. Oh, like, for so sure. So we've seen like one attempt at a double cap and it's ended in a knocked over stack. Oh. And so that's a, mm -hmm. um, so like, I think if like, I think especially at the really high level of play where you're going to see really close high scores, it's going to be really important. But I think with teams just right now playing at state championships, it may not be required yet. So teams may opt to take the safer route. Yeah, I know uh, in Florida, Neutrinos and their uh, partner, I'm pretty sure it was 3846 Maelstrom, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, they double capped on a nine stack and they actually set the highest score in Florida at 125. So there definitely is a lot of risk involved, but honestly, it's a really high reward thing. And at the World Championships in the final matches, like that's the risk you have to take. So uh, that's all I have for North Carolina today. But now let's go on to their sister state, South Carolina. South Carolina has had a couple meets since our last show. And currently, Team 327, the Robotomist, have the highest OPR at 36.4. They've been pretty consistent holding some of the top OPRs in the state. And hopefully we'll see some high scores from them uh, at their state championship later uh, this month. Now, Alaska. Alaska's our next state, and they've had two meets so far. Currently, 3208 Hyperlinks has the highest OPR at about 38, and the highest score in the state with 72 points. This was done with a 30-point auto and 30-point endgame, so it seems like at least one team is running about a two-skystone auto. And I think this really shows like how important auto and endgame are this year. I mean, just those 15 points for moving the foundation out at the end, and then the 10 points of both teams park, it can really swing matches. What do you guys think? 
It is entirely swung matches. Mm -hmm. uh, you may think that your your tiers stacking up from team to team is exactly the same. And, oh, my gosh, they've made the capstone. They've done all these different things. It looks exactly the same. But that, that autonomous is really what's going to make you a lot of points. And so I'm going to talk about it later in my segment. But autonomous has made such a huge, huge difference with a lot of the teams uh, that I've seen so far. Yeah, I know um, one thing uh, we one of our other hosts pointed out at the Top 25 show last month was that uh, Teleop win you finals matches, uh, but auto is really what wins you qualification matches. And I think that's something that's really important because this year, like, teams are already getting 60, like, 60 point autos, and, like, the max right now is a 72 point auto. And once teams hit that, I mean, you're breaking state records just with an mm -hmm. autonomous. Like, you don't even need to run your robot for the last two minutes of the match. And I think that's just insane how teams are able to do that this year. Well, even so, with doing autonomous, you are going to have a very high likely chance of something that is going to consistently award you those points. Right, if you build right. and build and build throughout the whole entire uh, driver control, one little mistake, you lose all mm -hmm. of those points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, uh, Ingrid. So uh, on to our last, my last state of the night, uh, California. California has been really busy recently with about 30 ha events happening in the last month. The number one ranked team in California is 8404 Quicksilver, who was last year's Houston Control Award winner. Their highest score is a uh, 130, and they also have gotten 124 with an 11 stack. I think that's just incredible. As far as I know, there's only been like six or seven 11 stacks in the world right now. And I mean, Quicksilver is really showing that they're a top tier robot. And um, 11039 Innovators is second in California uh, at an OPR of 66.4. And hopefully, I'm, what I'm hoping for is the NorCal ch Championship that's coming up. And I mean, if you have Quicksilver and 8802 Negative Resistance, who I'm sure you guys will be talking about later, uh, both competing at the same event. I mean, if they get on an alliance, I'm just excited to see what they'll come up with. It would be really for awesome sure. to see if they were head to head. That would mm -hmm. be the most intense match ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know uh, last year Quicksilver, when they were talking about or like when they were announcing the control award winner, they mentioned that Quicksilver used like the VU marks and like the targets all around the field to navigate through their autonomous. And I thought that was a really cool and innovative solution. All right, that's it for my uh, part of my portion of the states tonight. Egan, you want to take over? Sure. Uh, I've got a couple of states rapid fire here. Um, <laughs> Idaho's state championship is coming up on the 29th. So we don't have any uh, data from them yet. If you're from Idaho, please uh, come into the First Updates Now Discord and give us some information for our, our next uh, recap. Tennessee had their state championship uh, where 11161 Tennessee Robotics Club won the Inspire Award and was the captain of the winning alliance with 6073 Must Robotics and Sharp 8411 also on that winning alliance. In Mississippi, there are Senatobia and Jackson qualifiers um, happened ahead of their state championship on the 28th this month. At the Senatobia qualifier, team 14800 Cyberdyne won the Inspire Award with 16489 Virtual North and 6302 Nekos on the winning alliance. And at the Jackson qualifier, the rookie team 17341 Tropical Depression won the Inspire Award with team 86 to 8651, wait for it, and 13176 Sparkomatic on the winning alliance. And each event had a high score of 71 and 90, respectively. In Louisiana, they had their Baton Rouge qualifier a few weeks ago, where 13017 Event Horizon won the Inspire Award, and 1703 Astrobots and 16879 Edie White High School making up the winning alliance. And the high score for that event was 73 points. In Missouri, they had their Southeast qualifier with 7139 KHS Robotics and 11126 Revolution Robotics and 10265 Force Green on the winning alliance. This event also had a high score of 78 points. Now, enough of the rapid fire. Let me go a little bit slower here for the, uh, uh, the Georgia League champs. So they had their last uh, few league champs two weeks ago with the state championship coming up in only 10 days. Uh, so there will be 48 teams across two divisions and seven world slots at this championship. Now at the Western Georgia League Tournament, the favorites of 7373 Eagle Robotics and 4100 Darbots 
miss their finals bid on a loose connection oh. on their phone, oh, causing no. them to get knocked out in the semis. And oh, 6047 man. Twisted Axles, also on their alliance, couldn't help bring the match score back up. And for the first time in years, uh, they were unable to qualify for the state competition. Really? And so 7373, 4100 advanced off of Inspire 1 and 2, respectively, despite that. Uh, and Duck Ties and Zip Tape formed a <laughs> second team this year, uh, with the rookies managing to spot at managing a spot at state as the winning alliance captain. Um, and d- so one of the favorites going in was Darbots 4100, and they've been one of the teams we've been looking at since uh, since early in their league meets. They posted match videos where they have um, like 50 and, and 80 points pretty early on, uh, where they had a strong like one or, one or two stone auto starting out. Um, but this video you can see on screen here is their mid-season robot reveal. Um, which has has them not really improving much since their their last event or their last video. So I think it'll definitely be interesting to see how they how they show up at state um, and if they really manage to improve here. Um, but I personally don't see them going any higher than than being a first pick in their division. Um, I, I don't see them being an alliance captain with other teams like, uh, batteries not included coming out here from the other league championship. So do you, what do you guys think about the state of their robot compared to uh, some of the early league meets that we saw earlier? So, I mean, right off the bat, I think even though Darbots may not be doing like 9, 10 high, I think just a really consistent stacker bot is what teams will be looking for as their first or second pick. And like really, like this year, consistency is the name of the game. I mean, you drop your tower once, the whole match is lost. And I think Darbots poses uh, uh, poses a robot that has been extremely consistent and could be on the winning alliance. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. something to, to think about there is the consistency over mm-hmm. on top of uh, just raw performance. Mm-hmm. And uh, Egan, I have a question for you. Is Georgia a closed state? Uh, what do you mean by that? So, like, <laughs> like do, do they... they like... Do like, they only allow uh, Georgia teams to compete? Yes, yes. Georgia is a closed state. Okay. All right. All right. Um, now, at the Central Georgia League Champs, which happened on the same day as the uh, the Western League Champs, um, batteries not included lost their spot as a number one seed as a number one seed in their last call match due to a disconnect. And um, my sister team, <laughs> ten o two Circuit Runners, were not able to help them bring up the match score. Uh, so they were unable to be an alliance captain. They were picked first, though, by 15173 Robotic Eagles and led a sweep through the semis, um, where the other team, they, the other alliance they met in finals, 14165 Pterodactyl Bros and 17456 Atlantis, uh, struggled a little bit. Um, and in, in the finals matches, they were very, very close. Uh, BNI and the Robotic Eagles were. Uh, were victorious in their first match, um, although they did end up losing the next two with one of the matches uh, having BNI's tower fall over and resting on the side of the field, meaning none of it count. None of it counted. So they um, they were kind of unlucky with that, and BNI has been plagued with some disconnecting issues uh, with uh, static. So it's it's a little... Uh, hard to see them not do so well this year um but they're definitely uh going to be figuring out some of this and creating a much more competitive robot for states uh in terms of advancement from from this event the robotic eagles won the inspire award followed by my team 11347 circuit runners black and 12762 tech titans um, 4631 Firewires ended their day at rank 5 and were unfortunately not picked due to some confusion with the uh, the scouting guys. However, all of the double qualifications meant they advanced the state on the Motivate Award. Um, so definitely very lucky for them. Uh, and from what you guys have seen, do you think we'll see another uh, world-class team out of Georgia like we did last year with Batteries Not Included? Uh, so I think... I think there there will always be like at least one or two good teams uh, from states like Georgia, and I mean batteries not included, they could still make it to the world championships through the uh, lottery, right? 
Yeah, I, I don't. It doesn't seem likely from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they do have a good chance at um, an Inspire nomination uh, mm-hmm. or being an Alliance captain at mm-hmm. at the state championship. All right. Well, All even right. still, the ones that are coming from Georgia, they're going to have about two months to really work on their robot and get get any of their little issues that they have worked out. And so they can also watch other videos of other robots and learn from other teams. And maybe they'll have two months of undisturbed time, supposedly, to work on that robot. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Moving on to Washington. Uh, So they had their state championship just a few short weeks ago um, with 3491 Fix-It winning the Inspire Award. Uh, And the finals (laughs) during this event were... Quite the journey, to to say the least. So, uh, 11138 Robo Eclipse and 8802 Negative Resistance, um, who's also going to be competing at NorCal, I believe. Uh, and 5953 Robotics were on the winning alliance uh, against 9915 Robo Thunder, 1104 Bearded Pineapples, and 7462 Not to Scale on the finalist alliance. Uh, so, Negative Resistance had a... Uh, fairly consistent five block auto making them one of the most um competitive teams at the event um finals match one was a close victory by them on the red alliance however due to uh 8802 somehow having two batteries on the robot uh they received a red card and had to forfeit that match and they were stuck with a yellow card for the rest of the finals uh however they were they were able to closely win the next two matches Winning 118 to 99 in finals two, and 125 to 105 in finals three. Uh, so you can see the video on the screen right now of when they announce the score, um, <clears throat> explaining the red card will be up on the screen in a second. Uh, so they got a zero score on that because of the double battery, uh, although they uh, were possibly poised to to win. Uh, to win that match. So they could have ended it sooner, but unfortunately they had it dragged on. Um, so Washington has been one of the stronger states this year. The high score of the event penalty free uh, was 139. So that's really, really good for this season, putting them on par with some of uh, the best teams in the world right now. So uh, how do you guys think Washington stacks up to some other heavy hitter states uh, like Florida and other other places of the like uh i mean i'm just really excited to see how negative resistance performs at the world championship and even norcal that's coming up yeah, i don't sure. know that five stone auto sounds really juicy and pretty good for uh worlds coming up hopefully they only have one battery next time <laughs> <laughs> all right uh well that's it for me moving on to bryant yeah, so we're going to start out with um, Arkansas. So Arkansas has had two qualifiers since um, the last recap. So at the Springdale 1 qualifier, we saw a four-way ranking point tie between 7842 Browncoats, 9879 Root Negative 1, 17179 Devilbots, and 92 Junior Bomb Squad. At uh, this tournament, Browncoats set the highest OPR we've seen in all of Arkansas so far. And um, then these four teams also met up in the finals, and Team 17179 Devil Bots and Team 92 the Junior Bomb Squad were able to come out on top. And then in addition, Team 7842 the Browncoats won the Inspire Award at this competition. Um, and then at the Springdale 2 qualifier, which you're seeing the first finals match on the screen, um, Team 9879 Root Negative 1 went undefeated in qualification matches. And they picked Team 7572 Lights On to be on their alliance. And um, these two teams were able to work well together as 9879 was delivering to 7572. And uh, they built some pretty high stacks, which you'll probably see in the video here. Um, and then Team 9879 Root Negative 1 was also able to win the Inspire Award at this qualifier. And so uh, something that we noticed, especially um, at these qualifiers in Arkansas, is how important autonomous was how how much further do you guys think people are going to be able to push autonomous to getting like maybe like five six stones very consistently and being able to move the foundation and park do you think teams are going to get there before these state competitions or maybe not till worlds what do you guys think i'm thinking more worlds is is really because a lot of state competitions are going to happen this weekend next weekend over the next couple of couple two three weeks and so 
uh, I don't think they're quite there yet. I mean, the five stone auto we're seeing uh, happening more often now, but that six stone auto, you're going to have to get some teamwork, I think, because just going zipping back and forth, that's a lot. And sometimes those particular robots that are doing it all themselves are not even making the navigation parking. And so that's that's what I was curious about also is how are these teams going to do all this teamwork to make that autonomous work out? <laughs> I, uh, I, I agree with Ingrid here in the sense that I think with state championships coming up too, so soon, it might be a little too late for teams to get that six stone. But I think there will definitely be uh, some six stones and definitely some coordinated six stones at the world championship. Yeah, and it, it looks like we had a question from chat about launching on the shuttle bot, and that was not called at, uh, it was not termed launching at Arkansas. So it, it, that's, I know that's still a rule that was kind of, um, like that's kind of up in the air and was partially answered on the forums. So I think we'll, we'll have to see, um, how that gets played. Yeah, Ingrid, you can also, uh, for sure answer this since you are a ref. Um, the, on the forums, there is a, there's a link to a YouTube video that shows six examples of what launching is being considered launching in the sense that we've all been considering is whenever you basically, um, I guess the term the kids are using nowadays is yeet that stone across, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, it's actually, it's, it's actually causing any sort of propelling at whatsoever. So if you have that kind of intake an outtake that spits out, uh, has those wheels and it spits out the stone, if it ends up propelling just even a little bit out of that, that's considered launching. And so just take a look at that YouTube video. Um, we haven't been calling it that in Oklahoma because I, we just haven't been watching that. And so we'll definitely be watching it at Worlds for sure. Yeah, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we can move on to our next state now, which is Texas. So um, first, as Texas uh, leagues came to an end, we've seen some gameplay from some amazing teams in Texas. So at the um, Austin Metro League Championships, Team 8886 Saber Robotics, Team 8424 Cyber Eagles, and Team 4546 Viperbot, Viperbot Snakebite made it to the finals division by scoring nearly 100 points in every match in their division. But then in the other division, we had some powerhouse teams like 7162 Viperbots Hydra, 6299 Viperbots Quadex, and 6990 Static Void. And so these teams did have some issues with their autonomous in the finals matches, which uh, caused them both of their matches. And so that ended up sending teams 3781 Pyromaniacs, team 12928 Lightsabers, and team 7 17315 Westwood Robotics Tomahawk to the finals division. Uh, during the finals match one and two, team 8886 Saber Robotics, 8424 Cyber Eagles, and team 4546 scored 86 and 149 points. That was with penalties. And that ended up winning them the Austin Metro League Championships and sending them to the Alamo Regionals. We've also seen some other strong teams across other parts of Texas. At the Texas Lamar on January 25th, Team 7172 Technical Difficulties had an excellent showing with an OPR of 93.1. And some other top-ranked teams in Texas include 16617 Nazareth Robotics, Team 12713 Impulse, Team 12857 Phantom, Team 5890 The Eliminators, 9829 The MacBots, 12448 Patriot Engineers Mars, and Team 16910 Spaghetti Pasta Bots. Um, <laughs> many more uh, Texas championships are coming up in the next few weeks, so I'd be sure to be on the lookout for those. Oh, and it was, yeah, 71-72, so for that mistake. And then, um, so we can go on to our next uh, state here, which is Arizona. So three qualifiers have happened in Arizona since our last recap. Uh, the first one was the Queen Creek Qualifier. Where team 16258, the Robo Raptors, and team 8995, the Jagers, both went undefeated in qualifying matches. Um, the Robo Raptors picked team 15516, Eagles MX, and team 14835, mm -hmm. the Robo Warriors, to be on their alliance. But they did end up losing to the second seeded alliance, 8995, Jagers, 15430, Ace Robotics, 
and Team 11980, Team Viper. Um, but then uh, also Team 15516, Eagles MX, was able to pick up the Inspire Award. Um, and so that that's about it for that qualifier. Um, the next qualifier was the Scottsdale Qualifying Tournament, um, where Team 5661, Wolves Robotics 1, was ranked first after going undefeated in qualification matches. They picked Team 14999 Prestige Worldwide, who is ranked fourth. These two teams were able to put up some high scores and won both of their semifinal matches and finals matches. And so they're also very successful on the judging side of things, with Prestige Worldwide winning the Inspire Award and Wolves Robotics 1 being the runner-up for the Inspire Award. Um, the last qualifier that happened in, uh, in Arizona was... Uh, the West Valley qualifier, which happened this PAX weekend, where Team 10984 B Probotic came out um, came out first after qualifications, mm -hmm. and they picked up, and then they got Team 8995 Jagers and 16159 Hot Squad, and so these teams were able to score very high. And so uh, next we can move on to a uh, Utah, where we had a uh, three more qualifiers. So at the Park City qualifier, um, Team 12384 Checkmate has proven to be one of the strongest teams in Utah. And they picked 5804 Bot Engineers and 17282 Cotton Candy Crew. Um, we also had the Dixie State Qualifier, where Team TNT and Team TWCA were able to be the winning alliance. And Team 16091 TWCA was also able to get the um, Inspire Award. And then for uh, my last state, we have Oregon. And uh, Oregon's had a lot of events, but we're going to go over the Super <clears throat> Qualifier that happened last weekend. At the Coronet Super Qualifier, three teams were undefeated after qualification matches, and these were 7604 Dwy, 4412 Java, and 7875 MIG. Um, 7604 picked 5266 Glasses Half Full and 17369 Nova Galaxy to be on their alliance, and this alliance won both of their semifinal matches and both of their final uh, matches against the number two seeded alliance. And um, so that's about it for um, Oregon. So if Ingrid, you'd like to move on to your set of states. All right. So I am going to start talking about Colorado. Uh, Colorado has been busy over the past month with four qualifiers. And then their state championship was last weekend. There was an incredible match I'd like to share with you guys from the Colorado championship. Uh, this is the finals match number three between Blue Alliance second seeded team captain 760 Metal Menace and their first pick 11260 Upper Creek Robotics against Red Alliance first seeded team captain 16896 Black Forest Robotics and their first pick 6929 Data Force. So the Blue Alliance delivered and placed on the foundation two Sky Stones and a regular stone, but they missed the foundation repositioning, but they ended up doing a double parking uh, during autonomous. Red Alliance upped the ante by delivering and placing five stones on the reposition foundation. Uh, driver control period was a race to the sky. Blue Alliance up of a Creek Robotics managed to build up to five tiers considering a stone got stuck in their hopper. Red Alliance carried on with a well-timed teamwork of Black Forest Robotics delivering stones to Data Force to build on 11 tier skyscraper. That's just absolutely insane the amount of points and agility on stacking and holding that skyscraper steady while pulling the foundation out of the building site. I'm thoroughly impressed. I mean, just every month that we talk about these different teams, I get more and more impressed about um, how determined these teams are in building and delivering, doing that teamwork back and forth. Um, and one thing that I do want to note is uh, one of the things that happened with, uh, what was it, up a creek, they got one stone stuck in their uh, intake, well, they reached out and they grabbed another stone and they actually scored that on the foundation. If it's stuck underneath you, you're technically still controlling that. The penalty wasn't called for this particular match, which, I mean, it would be negligible considering all the points that were scored on the opposing alliance anyways. But you might want to keep that in consideration. If you have one that's stuck inside of you or underneath you, don't go after another stone. And especially if you're going to end up scoring with that stone, that leads to a double major penalty on top of all the miners for controlling stuff. So just to just to let you know from my perspective as a referee. Uh, next one will be Nevada. Nevada has had some action over the past month in both North and South Leagues. 
The North League Finals will be this Saturday, and the South League Finals were two weeks ago in Las Vegas. The first seeded team, 3050 G-Bots, and their alliance partner, 17482 Ninth Island High Rollers, these two were a dynamic duo plowing their way through semifinals and finals. Giving a good show, this duo won their first match in semifinals, they lost their second match, and they dominated in their third match to move onward to finals. According to the scoring in the Orange Alliance, this duo consistently was able to deliver one stone and place it on the reposition foundation and Parker Robot, as well as move the foundation back out during endgame with a five-tier capped Sky Stone and a double park. This consistency beat out the competition and made them champs for the day. Consistency is key with a lot of different teams is what I'm seeing. Uh, Nevada State Championship is scheduled for next week in the 21st and 22nd, which also so happens to be the weekend for the regional in Oklahoma. So that leads us to Oklahoma. Last time I mentioned that the Oklahoma League Championships would be January 25th. It was a great day filled with uh, hardworking teams that have been practicing all season to snag a ticket to Oklahoma Regional. I would like to draw our attention to one of the finals matches, thanks to uh, Zach Tyler, uh, he is from Bison Bison. It's a new team this year. Um, the Blue Alliance, uh, sorry, I skipped a thing. For this match, the Red Alliance consisted of first seeded team 5553, the Robo Comets, and their first pick 11354, the Midnight Ostrich Runners. The Blue Alliance consisted of the second team, uh, second seeded team 10355, Project Peacock, and their uh, second pick, 14906, Leviathan. The Blue Alliance stacked up a four-tier skyscraper and capped it thanks to Project Peacock. The Red Alliance stacked a five-tier skyscraper but didn't have any capping. As the Red Alliance pulled the foundation out of the building site, the five-tier skyscraper threatened to topple over with some earth-shaking wiggles, but it stood tall while both bots parked. This game score was super close. Unfortunately, I don't have the actual score, um, but I was there, and I can tell you that the Red Alliance did win, and I remember it being incredibly close, but we don't have the scores up on the Orange Alliance yet for that one. So uh, here's a question. Do you, does anybody have any skyscraper drama in their region? We've had a bunch <laughs> fall over during endgame throughout the Newcastle qualifier that we had a couple weeks ago, and I tell you, my heart drops every single time. Like, I just can't stand watching all that work happen, and then all of a sudden in the last moment, whether you're pulling – your foundation out of the building side, or if you're just just trying to simply put the capstone on, it just everything goes down. The whole audience just everyone lurches right. forward. Is everybody yeah. else having this issue too? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can tell you, like we had our Gulf Coast League Championship recently, and I mean, I remember like semifinals two match one. It was neck and neck. You had six high, six or seven high on either side, and just last. 30 or 15 seconds, one team knocked over the whole fan, uh, the whole stack. And, I mean, it just decided the match. It was just, I mean, it's it's really, really exciting, but also really, really heartbreaking. And I know something that a lot of teams have been doing and talking about on the FTC Discord is that uh, making their human players check the stones to get the best stones possible. And I think that's a really interesting strategy. Uh, and it, like, really shows how much tolerances really matter in this game and, like, how how precise everything needs to be in order to get those 11, 12 high towers. So how are they checking these stones? I don't understand. They're all supposed to be the same. Um, there are... Okay, so what happens is basically there's, like, little bows uh, on the sides or the top, and because of this, the tower will tend to lean to one side or the other. And I huh. think another teams, another thing teams have seen is that you can, like... The foundation itself isn't even completely. And so, like, if you stack, like, on one side of the foundation and then just move over one, like, uh, one, like grid or like one column over the t the tower will lead like the completely different way and it's just i think it's yeah. really interesting <laughs> i mean it makes sense especially after gameplay after multiple if you're going to use this on multiple qualifiers the same fields basically mm -hmm. i can see how it would get destroyed really quickly like that but that's a, that's crazy i learned something new today <laughs> 
All right. I think that's it, everyone, for our FTC Road to Houston Championship recap. So thank you guys for all the follows and subscriptions we received today. Don't forget that you or your parents can subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime. And we hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. If you want to stay connected with what Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Fun FTC and join our Discord through the link in the chat. On behalf of myself, Egan, Brian, Ingrid, and our producer, Tyler, working behind the scenes, I would like you to thank you all for tuning in. And make sure to stick around for the FTC Top 25 in a couple minutes. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.